I can still hear yesterday's crowds ringing in my ears, shouts of Hosanna filling the air. Lord, we beseech thee, rescue us, save us, they cried. I stood among the, the press of bodies, watching my firstborn son ride into the city on the back of a colt. These people had been following us since he raised Lazarus and word of his power was spreading quickly, but not everyone was pleased. Just two nights ago, we dined with Mary and Martha, and though it was a, a joyful moment, I could tell that something was wrong. I listened as my son rebuked Judas as he spoke of his burial and reminded us that one day he would no longer be with us. I heard the whispers in the crowd that the chief priests were plotting against us. Seeing him treading upon the palm branches, I couldn't help but remember him as a child. The first times that he entered the city and he spoke in the temple, well, his father's house, he would always correct us. But returning here again, my heart remains uneasy. I remember the words of Simeon as I watched men fall prostrate before this, this little boy whom I have loved all these years. A sword shall pierce my heart also. A sword shall pierce my heart. And I worry that even now the blade is being drawn. Today, I followed him through the festival. My heart beamed with pride and awe at the miracles he wrought here. Just moments ago, Philip and Andrew pulled him aside. A group of Greeks were seeking audience. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, he said. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. They hung on his every word, and the spirit in him moved us all. But a shadow passed across his face. Now my soul is troubled, he continued. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. I was sent here for this very reason. Father, glorify your name, they cried voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. But some heard it only as a, a crack of thunder while others of us thought that the angels were speaking to him. Before we could argue further, he cut us off. The voice was for your benefit, not mine, he said. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. The crowd became restless. If he was the Messiah, then why would he be lifted from the earth? Why would he leave so quickly after entering the holy city? And once more, he said to them, you, are going to have the light only for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before the darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Believe in the light while you still have the light so that you may become children of the light. I could see, I could see the disappointment and the confusion on their faces just 24 hours ago. This city was in a triumphant uproar, clamoring for his salvation. And now he was speaking of things 
they could not understand. Things I could not understand. Even now my heart is breaking. It wasn't meant to be like this, was it? I can't stay much longer. He is leaving and I know that look on his face. A mother knows when a son needs some time to hide himself. I can't imagine what he is going through. If things can change this much in just 48 hours, what could the next few days possibly hold? I won't leave his side though. I'm walking with Jesus because he is the flesh of my flesh. He is the bone of my bone. He is my son.